Hi everybody, this is Dennis from the Dennis and Andy Show and I'm going to be doing a full review and uh, basically going through the Star Trek Starfleet technical manuals. Now the cool thing is my buddy Carl gave me one that he's had sitting uh, on his shelf for a while and that's this one. This is uh, the original one from 1975. This was the, uh, the first printing of it. Um, I've had for quite a while um, so when it first came out, the second uh, edition of it, which was the 20th anniversary, which came out in uh, 1986. Internally, they're pretty much uh, exactly the same. Uh, you'll notice the original price was $6.95 when uh, Ballantine Pooks, Pooks, uh put this out in 1975. And then it jumped up to uh, $10.95 in there. You know, the interior is pretty much the same. Uh, in terms of it, these are really cool books. I've enjoyed it. Um, so the only differences when you can tell is that they, every edition, they did a 30th edition and a 40th edition, which were the third and fourth printings. Um, you know, and here it just says celebrate Star Trek's 20th anniversary with the classic handbook every Starfleet cadet must have. So I do want to kind of show it. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, but not everybody. Um, in the uh, original manual was, was kind of neat uh, from the standpoint that instead of just being a, a paperback, this one actually had, it's like a binder on the uh, outside. So you can see it's like, like an old school binder, like the material of the old three ring binders. And then here's the Starfleet technical manual. And you will see that it literally uh, is like what you would do for a, 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 an actual technical manual that you'd work with. And you can see even on the, uh, on the corner, you know, it's a hard bound and it just says technical uh, manual on it. So, you know, if you're thinking like in your aerospace program, stuff like that, you know, a lot of your manuals were very much like this. They actually don't have, uh, as we kind of flip through it, they actually don't have page numbers, which I think is is really kind of uh, neat uh, on it. You know, um, they will actually have just up in here, you can see what page you are. And they never have, no matter which edition you get, first, second, third, fourth uh, printings of them, they never did add page numbers to it. So this one is in fully intact. Um, I know a lot of them had glue problems where uh, the pages uh, would start coming out, especially over over time. Um, you know, this one is being out in 1975. So this is th these are really cool, though. If you ever want um, to, you know, utilize something, if you're writing Star Trek stories or, you know, this is one of the main manuals that I know that they utilize when... You know, they're coming up with stories and ship designs and stuff. So you can see it lays out what, you know, the United Nations symbols, what's uh, Starfleet symbols, the different signets and shields and standards and everything um, that they used. So these are always kind of a, a fun. Uh, this goes through the Starfleet Armed Forces. So you can see like their org chart, Starfleet Command, who reports... Military Staff Committee, which goes to the uh, Federation Council, and then it breaks down, you know, who everybody kind of reports to. Um, same thing, Chief of Operations, it breaks down. This is just a wealth of, of knowledge. Um, Starfleet Technical Orders. Um, here is some of the, uh, the designs, the General Arrangement of Fleet Headquarters. You can actually see. So, those of you that watch the original show, you know, you'll see that like the space stations, uh, you know, the K-7 and stuff are all very similar to this. It does break down like the interior of the uh, fleet headquarters, um, which is kind of neat. Uh, we don't see these very often. We will be getting to the starships, which I will go into a little more detail. For those of you that do your costumes, um, you know, it actually talks about it in here. You can see from the original series, the command, the science, the engineering. You can see your rank, how it's uh, on their sleeves. Um, how the, uh, what the dimensions of the duty uniforms were for both male and then female. 
and you can see some really great representations at a lot of the conventions. It even goes through the patterns um, that are in there, which I think is, is really neat. And I know those who can make their own, they, they do. Um, the uniform patterns. Um, Starfleet, this is my favorite sections. I used to love these things as a, as a kid. I also played the FASA and used to love designing starships. Um, but I always held true to, you know, Roddenberry's uh, formulas of having, you know, two warp nacelles and things. One of my favorite ships really is the Destroyer, um, you know, class, which is you know, like Saladin, but it, it, it never fit the rules. But what was cool was there's the heavy cruiser class, which is predominantly what we saw in, you know, Star Trek, the original series. There's the Destroyer, there's the Tug, and then they also had come up with the Dreadnought, which is a warship, uh, a Mark 10 warship, um, which they did do a book uh, on it, which was really cool. Um, I love the story on it, but, uh, you know, it never made it to the screen, per se. The Next Generation had one. But, you know, here it lists the heavy cruiser, and you can see cruising speed of warp 6, emergency speed of warp 8, main phasers, three banks of two each, and you can see where they're showing you there's two phasers there. You can see two there and two there. There's the three banks, your photon torpedo launcher tubes up there this is obviously the original before the refit but it gives you you know all the information two banks of the photon torpedoes and the thing that i think is fantastic is it actually goes through and lists what the original uh, constitution classes were by name um, and then they were talking about the mark uh, 9a classes that were authorized um, and then it goes into the replacements that were authorized by Starfleet. And then um, it talks about the B classes that were authorized by Starfleet appropriation. So it does list, you know, the, a lot of, the, uh, of the, uh, the numbers of the different ships. Same thing with the Destroy Destroyer class. There's the Saladin, which it was uh, pretty much named uh, after. Um, there's your scout ship. Your transport, which was cool, and it does the same thing. It gives all your stats, your ranges, and everything down below. Um, your tug units that were um, hauled the different types of units by the, uh, the tugs. And then my favorite ship, which I really wish they would have done something with. We did utilize it in Starfleet uh, uh, battles. But, you know, the Dreadnought class, which was really neat. You know, warp 8, emergency speed of 10. They had five phaser banks. You can see they had two, one, two, three sets there. Um, they had another phaser bank down below, and then they had another phaser bank on the, uh, they had them on the primary and in the secondary uh, hull. Torpedoes, they had two banks. Um, they had forward and rear deflector dishes, but they had three warp nacelles, which again, didn't really fit the, uh, you know, the way that Roddenberry wanted all the starships to be designed. Um, you know, like the Stargazer had four. This was neat. There is your shuttle bay that was in the actual front of it. So this was cool. There weren't many because, you know, they're an exploration, you know, unit, not a, a war, you know, basically Navy. But this these were warships, so they did have a list of them. The USS Federation, um, which was the uh, the flagship for it. And then you can get into the shuttles and then the staterooms. There's all your schematics for the bridge and consoles. If you do wind up doing models and stuff, I mean, the, the models are fantastic for them. I used to build them. They're a lot of fun. Here's your phasers. Um, it even talks about your stun, heat, disrupt, dematerialize. Uh, and then overload what the effective range and like meters were, the ray guns that they had, you know. So this book is just chocked full of uh, information, command intelligence, science tricorders, um, and these are really neat. For those of you that own some, I mean, they they follow these, you know, very 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 closely. So this was this was great when they did it. Uh, the sins based datum, you know, uh, velocity relationships, orbits, 
the Milky Way galaxy, the known Federation space, with the medical sections, there's your medical tricorders, um, there's your different information on the video unit, the heartbeat reader, um, all the things that we love, um, uh, the proto uh, plaser. Um, these are these were cool. There's your different scalpels, and you know I've got a bunch of these that that I have from the the different companies that put them out. They're a lot of fun. Your communications consoles. There's your uh, communicators and how they work. Like I said, it's just anything that you don't want from the original Star Trek, the Universal Translator that you remember seeing from some of the episodes. They just did a really great job of putting all the original information in. And they, you know, think about this. They did this back in 1975, which I thought was just fantastic. I've been a fan of it for a long time. Um, your propulsion units, it actually goes through like the Bassard collectors and all the information that's on it. Um, and it even talks about which versions were, you know, on which ships. Like I said, any information that you want, there's your transporter units. Um, these actually have at your hangar bay, even the Vulcan, <laughs> the Vulcan harp, the Lirette, the 3D chess, which Kirk and Spock would play. Um, you know, it's got some graph paper in the back. And it even came with, uh, you know, from um, two Ballantine books talking about you know, how this was an approved copy that they had put out. So this is an absolutely really uh, fun book. And on the back, you can see there's just nothing there. That That's the entire book. It is a lot of fun. Thanks, Carl, for giving me one of the uh, originals. And uh, it's just neat comparing it, like I said, to this one. The interiors are absolutely identical. But it's just neat having something that they first put out. Um, and I know a lot of my friends have 30th or 40th versions of them. And like I said, it doesn't matter which one you get on the interior. It's all the same, but it's still great having them reprinted. So if you're a Star Trek fan, these are awesome. I know you can pick them up on eBay or Amazon. Any of the Trek conventions would have them. They're a lot of fun just to look through. I really enjoy it. Um, if you want, uh, smash that like and subscribe button. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if you've got these, what you think of these. Um, I have some original of, uh, uh, schematics of like the Enterprise A from the motion picture, the, uh, the refit, I should say, um, uh, up on my wall and stuff like that. So I do love all the, the technicalities that, that Star Trek puts out. Um, I'll leave all the descriptions down below. Um, and uh, also a link to Cordrath, um, which is the project that uh, Andy and I are working on, our comic book, or should I say graphic novel that we're putting out, along with the role-playing game. So anyway, leave your comments down below, and we will talk to you all soon. Hope you enjoyed it.